Um, well, we'll we'll wrap up here. We got to get to UW uh, before we go. Um, it it I, I believe you only played Washington twice, despite three years as a starter. Because so of- I actually only played them once. The first the first year uh, I only played them once. Okay. So I didn't start playing until about halfway through my sophomore year. So we played UW earlier in the year when AJ oh, Fee was still our quarterback. And while I did travel. Um, I was the backup uh, quarterback and just the holder for uh, PATs and field goals. So the only okay. time I ever stepped foot on uh, on the field at Husky Stadium during a game was to hold for PATs. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. That's good to know going forward. Um, you know, for people who know this game, th- this is the big Pacific Northwest rivalry. The Civil War, the, the former, the erstwhile Civil War is a fantastic game, but very regional, very local. Uh, Washington, Oregon is the big, the big, especially when you talk about national implications after 94, especially this, this was it. So there's been a touch of controversy, if you want to call it that in the last few days, I believe a phrase academic prowess was dropped somewhere. Um, so I'll just ask you, is Washington Oregon's big rival and is Oregon Washington's big rival? Who? <laughs> Who are you talking about? Uh, no. <laughs> Here's the interesting thing about the Oregon-Washington rivalry. If you use 94, the pick, as kind of the center point, as the, as the turning point yeah. of, that, of this series, the 20 years prior to the pick, or the 20 games, I should say, because we actually lost um, Washington on the schedule in 01, which is yeah. – why, what we were just talking about a second ago, I only got to play them once. Right. In 20 games prior to the pick, Washington was 17 and three against Oregon. Right. In the 20 games after the pick, Oregon was 16 and four against Washington. Yeah. And that dominance has continued. You know, we're almost to where I, you know, call it 20 years prior to the pick. And since then, you know, we're at like 47 years. So let's round, you know, let's round up for the, for the better part of the last 50 years. It's been a one-sided rivalry, you know, the first side being yeah. Washington and the latest side being Oregon. Oregon yeah. had a stretch there <clears throat> where they won 12 straight. I mean, it, it wasn't even it, that, give me another rivalry where that, you know, where that has happened, right? Another rivalry in which two national, nationally prominent football programs have had that kind of disparity, right? That's the interesting thing I think about it. And I was lucky enough to grow up in that time of, let's call it 90 to 2000, that decade of where things, where the tide started to turn. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing, and it's truly the pendulum has spung, sp- uh, swung both ways in this, is that as an Oregonian, we wanted what they had, right? They were Don James and they were, um, you know, the national championship, granted a split national championship, I think in 91. 91 with Miami. 90, yep. 91 with Miami. But, you know, they were they were you we always watch them i had to watch them in the rose bowl every every january 1st yeah (laughs) and we wanted what they had right and for so long they wouldn't even acknowledge that we existed and and i'll say for good reason because if you play 20 games and you win 17 of them you know every once in a while you know the 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 little puppy bites at your heels and that happens right right but then things shifted and kenny wheaton intercepted damon heward and, you know, the, the gangrene defense won it again the, the following year. And now you got a couple straight. And then Akili Smith and Pat Johnson go up to Seattle and knock them off in 97. And then Tui and, you know, the sixth ranked Huskies come down to Otson in 2000 and we beat them. And during that time, there was still this arrogance that was perceived on the, on the part of Oregonians that they still wouldn't acknowledge us, right? They still wouldn't acknowledge that, you know what, not only are, are we beating you consistently now, but your program is falling. You know, you lost Don James, you know, you lost Jim Lambright, you know, the, those days are, are gone. And now comes probation and now comes the 0 and 12 season 
you know, of, of Ty Willingham and yeah. we are, we're taken off. Yep. And so there was this time when we as an Oregon program were saying, Hey, we're here, you know, it, we're, we're searching for national prominence and we're searching for recognition. And the team that we always were watching on new year's day, that we were very evidently catching up to and beginning to pass, they weren't even acknowledging that we existed. Right. And that was the, that's what created the bitterness, right? That was, and, and like I said, the, the pendulum has swung the other direction. We were 12 straight against Washington. And now we're to the point where some of those Oregon fans who don't know the lean years, you know, who yeah. have grown up, you know, in the last 25 years where, you know, I'm going to guess 25, 27 years where we've won, you know, 19 of those games. It's 19 and six in the last 25. There you go. Yeah. Um, that's all they know. Right. And so now Oregon, those young Oregon fans are developing this sense of, help me with the word, confidence, gentle, sure, there you go. That works. gentle confidence about this team that exists up north. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's really interesting where for so long, Oregon and Washington have been the class, you know, along with USC down south but have been at least in the discussion in the class of the Pac-10, Pac-12, Pac-8 conference. Right. But very rarely have they actually been there at the same time. And it's yeah. created this huge disparity between the 20 years before the pick and the 25 years since, you know, and you have this moment when Kenny Wheaton picked off Damon Heward on the six yard line and yeah. took it 94 yards up the sideline. And Jerry is screaming at the top of his lungs. And every Oregonian knows Kenny Wheaton's going to score. Kenny Wheaton's going to score. <laughs> yep. Kenny Wheaton, you know, and, and yeah, that is the moment. I, I, I can rarely think of any other rivalries. And sure, there are great moments, you know, whether it's, um, you know, uh, Alabama trying the long field goal and Auburn yeah, sure. it back all the way. Like, uh, the, um, you know, Darren, not Darren Woods and Charles Woodson and the Michigan, Ohio State. Yeah, like, there are sure, great sure. moments in all sorts of rivalries. But rarely can I think of one singular play in one singular game that truly is the full, like, that is the point. Yeah. That's it right there. Yeah. And at that moment, you have what existed before and what has existed since. Yeah. And I think that's really unique. Oh, that's, it's totally unique. It's totally fascinating. It is the seminal moment. It is the moment everything changed. Um, yeah, it's, uh, and you talk about the, the Pac-12. If the Pac-12 is going to get back into this conversation as it should, they also need UCLA back in the fray. When you talk about pre-1998, you had USC, UCLA, Washington were essentially the, the, the trinity of Pac-10 teams who sort of held the line against the Big Ten. UCLA has faded away. Uh, Washington, we don't know what direction they're going right now. Oregon and USC, and now Oregon has been the program that has stood up to the rest of the country, taken on all comers, won some, lost some. But the Pac-12, uh, to get back in this, which I they need to, the college football is a better game when the West is competing with the rest of the country. It's just a lot more fun. Um, yeah, those teams, those teams need to get back in the fray. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's a nice way of saying it there. That's a really nice way of saying that the Pac-10 is outside of Oregon and occasionally USC for the better part of the last five to 10 years. They've, they've been kind of smelly. Yeah. Yeah, they have, they, they needed to get it together. Hopefully the new commissioner, uh, gets it together with football, that football, that rising tide and football lifts all ships. The PAC 12 wants to be great in Olympic sports and that's wonderful, but guess what? Be great at football and you'll get even better in Olympic sports. It's more money, more exposure, more everything. 